Tiber Jones, he's, he grew up in West Philadelphia. Yes, yeah, his Bible says he grew up in West Philadelphia. In a household where he watched both his parents consistently reaching out and helping to uplift inner city youth. After high school, he moved to Atlanta to attend Morehouse College. It was there that he decided to dedicate his life to uplifting underserved youth. He went on to earn a BA in psychology and a master's degree in educational leadership. He has worked as a teacher, counselor, school leader, program director, and community organizer. In 2006, he founded a K-8 private school and acted as its director for seven years. He has also initiated various urban agriculture initiatives around Metro Atlanta. He currently serves as the programs manager of Iman Atlanta, as well as community organizer at Glen Rose Gardens. So please give it up for our brother Atiba Jones. Uh, off to the stage. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with you all today, um, and it's an honor to be here in front of you, even though I am the, the, the least uh, deserving to, to be standing up here, and I'm the least deserving to be sharing the stage with so many uh, great scholars and speakers, and even though I'm not one I'm not a scholar nor a great speaker. I just want to share just a few things for a few minutes that I'm very passionate about. And um, anybody who knows me, they know that I'm very passionate about youth development. You know, I'm very passionate about agriculture. I'm very passionate about social justice. I'm very passionate about education and spiritual development. And I'm also very passionate about poetry. So to help me uh, to articulate some of these uh, passions that I have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a poem that kind of brings uh, some of those things together to start us off, inshallah. We strive to plant seeds while planting seeds. We strive to plant seeds while planting seeds. We plant seeds into land that feeds thousands and provides for their various needs. We empower the oppressed girl as she pleads. We empower the struggling student as he reads. And we nurture the environment by carefully removing its invasive weeds. We till the land. We till the land so that our people don't have to only eat that's can we help them understand that they don't have to eat the poison that's been marketed and labeled with the brand they don't have to eat the poison that's been marketed and labeled with the brand we can eat food grown by our own hand in an organic garden that's been planned but it doesn't have to be big and grand it can start small then expand it could be in a container on a balcony or windowsill the point is don't just sit still grow something do something see something be something give something receive something believe something achieve something we care for the earth we care for the earth as we observe her giving birth to so many life-giving creatures with so many beautiful features but if nurtured well these creatures could grow to become our teachers and our leaders they'll be givers not just keepers they'll be woken conscious not just sleepers we Fertilize the soil. We fertilize the soil while teaching our youth that their ancestors were royal. Like fruit, we ensure that our youth don't spoil. To their family and to their communities, we ensure that they are loyal. We harvest the fruits of our labor. We harvest the fruits of our labor knowing that success only comes to the Creator. And no matter how great something seems, He is always greater. In reality, the farmer is just the facilitator. We till, we plant, we water, but the one above is in control of the divine order. Growth and development is completely in His hands. Hands, whether it's in a hood or in distant lands, but we still have to make plans. We still have to take stands and speak out against injustice to even change it with our own hands. So, alhamdulillah, uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, so, alhamdulillah, I've had the opportunity to be involved in a lot of different initiatives over the years. Um, I've had the opportunity to be a part of the Risala Institute and Risala Gardens after that. I've had opportunity to be a part of the, uh, the Urban Youth Corps program uh, of Green Youth Foundation. Now, uh, now, currently, I have the opportunity to work with uh, the Inner City Muslim Action Network here in Atlanta, uh, uh, helping to build and develop the, uh, the Green Ridge program that's focused on uh, uh, build, building and developing uh, young men who, who are coming out of prison. Also, I have the opportunity right now to, to serve and help develop uh, Glen Rose Gardens which is a, a 240 unit townhome community, which is not just black owned, but black Muslim owned 
community. We have about 20 Muslim families uh, living there so far. We have a farm. We have uh, a lot of different programs happening. And um, if anybody who is interested, I highly encourage you to um, consider being a part of this community. Um, but I came today to, to introduce a, a new concept that, um, that is currently being developed that will, inshallah, work in conjunction with these other um, initiatives that I'm a part of. And that's it's a concept called Save Institute, right? It's a, it's a, this is a um, this is a, 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 a institution that we're proposing will will uh, be launched inshallah fall of 2020. Uh, save, um, it, it is referring to saving our our um, underserved youth from cycles of poverty, crime, and incarceration, right? And save also it stands for save a uh, service agriculture, vocational skills, and entrepreneurship. And these are four pillars that we believe could help a lot of our young men and women who are um, in unfortunate circumstances. So the Save yeah. Institute will, will utilize service through teaching people how to serve, right? Teaching our young men and women the importance of service. And there's a, st a study that was done that shows uh, when, when you teach um, and, and expose young people to, to service, they're, they're much more likely to live a life of service uh, into their old age. Also, um, also we, we highly uh, believe that, strongly believe that agriculture is a, is a very powerful tool for so many different things, for, for development, for psychology, for, for spirituality, and for um, being able to, to feed ourselves and grow our own food. And also, um, we believe that vocational skills are very important for the upliftment of, um, of our people so that we, we can have more skills, we can have um, more people that, that have skills that, that um, will allow them to go out and earn a decent income to take care of themselves and their families. And also, um, and also entrepreneurship, so that we uh, not only have to rely on gaining jobs, but we can create our own businesses which will allow for us to employ others. So we, we plan to um, bring all of these different things together under an uh, uh, institution where young men and women will be able to come and, and learn uh, all of these skills on a daily basis. Um, so, um, so with that, it is um, not only um, an independent and private school, but it's a, it's a school that is also free, right? Meaning that's a school that, um, not like a, a free in terms of a public or, or, or charter school, but free in terms of it being a, a school, an institution that pays for itself. Because as, as the students are, are learning uh, these skills, they're, they're, they're running the farm, they're operating um, the different business entities and things like that, which, which funds the school, eliminates the need to, uh, to charge tuition. So alhamdulillah, this is a, a big effort. So we ask that you all um, support this effort, pray for us, and um, inshallah, just continue to, to, to keep us in your, in your du'as, inshallah. And, um, and one thing um, that I want to, the last thing I want to share as I close is, um, is a message that, that I share with all of the young men and women that I that I work with, um, which is a, which is another uh, short poem. Um, this just is, that expresses some of the things that I, I always try to convey to our, our young men and women in this society. So I just want to share it with you as I close out. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> My young brothers and sisters, it's time to rise up and live up to your potential. It's time to live up to the legacy that has been passed down for centuries sequential. You have a greatness inside of you that is directly consequential of the oppression that your people have faced for far too long. So now it's time to rise up and stand strong. It's time to sing to a different tune and stop singing their song. It's time to prove them wrong because they expect for you to fail. They expect for you to end up in jail. They expect for you to live up to the negative stereotypes of the young black male or the young black female, and they are determined to put you through hell. But I say to hell with their plots and plans. You must not allow for your future to lie in their hands, so you must wake up and begin to take stands, but not just against them, but against your own selves and your bad habits that you think are so cool. While people are sitting back laughing, calling you a fool, you see, you must use your intellect as a fierce tool because it is one of your greatest weapons, but not of mass destruction, but of productive production. But you must not fall victim to the world's seduction. Stay focused and master trades like agriculture and construction, but not just to make money, but to uplift your sisters and your brothers, to uplift the single mothers, because to achieve true success, 
you must bring others. So, so it's time to spark some successful business enterprises with multiple branches and franchises. When you apply yourself, you'll see so many surprises from all that materializes. But to get there, you gotta pull up your pants and walk like a soldier. Get off the block and stand strong like a boulder. Stand strong like a boulder. And don't be afraid of failure. You must become bolder. Look to our elders and ancestors to stand on their shoulder. You're not getting any younger. You're only getting older. And the days will get colder. And the times will get harder. So to strive like a martyr and continue to go farther. You gotta think smarter. You are too intelligent to continue to fall into their traps. They're flooding drugs into our communities while we're caught up in these traps. They're feeding your mind poison through the music and these so-called raps. It's time to wake up. Cause there's no longer time for naps. It's time to discover your true life's mission. It's time to pack your bags and settle on an expedition to uplift yourselves and your people's condition. Along the way, you'll face obstacles and opposition, but just stay the course and victory will come to fruition. He's one of the quietest people. <laughs> I didn't know he had that in him. You know, you know it's, it's a problem. Like, he's almost never talked. He called me on the phone. He's a real soft spoken. You know, from the mic. It's a problem.